Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this short video I'm going to update you on some of the progress that the Training Group's members have made so far this season and I'm also going to answer some questions that you guys have sent in to the channel. OK, a brief update of group performances. It's actually quite early season here in the UK and the seniors have actually only competed a few times. Well, that's the majority of them anyway. Sarah, for example, has jumped 6 metres 19 and has only done two competitions, so it's progressing well. Jonathan, however, has done more competitions, but he did find it difficult to get going a few competitions back, but more recently has had two back-to-back -back competitions over 16 metres. With Jonathan, there has been a few technical issues, notably surrounding his arm action, but also we've had a bit of a conditioning worry or issue to deal with, and I'm going to go more into that in another video, but it's to do with power to weight ratio and also doing the right type of weight training. With the younger group members, it's been a bit of a PB fest with numerous personal bests from the guys and the girls in the group. For example, Samuel, who this time last year hadn't jumped 5 metres as an under 15 year old, has recently jumped 604, which ranks him 10th in the UK. Under 17 triple jumper Michael has leapt 14 metres 15, which currently ranks him 5th in the country for his age group. In terms of the girls and long jump, Lucy, an under 20 first year, has jumped 5 metres 74, and she's predominantly a multi eventer. In the under 15 category, we've had 5 meters 55 from Madison and 5 meters 74 from Ruby. So they're all jumping particularly well and we're really focusing on the basics with that age group. So how to take off, how to hold position mid-air and getting a good landing. Relevantly, in terms of training young athletes, CBJ 418 asks about whether or not we should emphasize run-ups when coaching young athletes. Well, of course, I think that's very important. The ability to develop the run-up rhythm and go through the specific stages, the acceleration, alignment, and attack phases, whilst also setting up the jump is obviously crucial. So I'd recommend that run-up and run-up structuring work be fundamental aspects when training a young athlete. Additionally, it's crucial to work on their running mechanics so that their stride length, their knee lift, their posture is not only just suited to the long jump, i.e. to achieve the right positions, particularly at takeoff, but also becomes more and more consistent so that they become aware of their running dynamics so that they can learn, as I've indicated, the patterning, the rhythm of their run-up so they get more and more accurate, more and more confident and more and more able to use their speed to its optimum level. The triple jump hop has, as ever, been a popular topic of conversation and questioning on the channel. And regular contributor in terms of questions, Judah D'Souza, asks about whether I coach the elements of the triple jump, the hop, the step and jump in isolation. As he's watched a or rather listen to a podcast featuring Christian Taylor, who was talking about breaking down the phases and working on them individually. Well, in terms of the answer to that particular question, it's a bit of both, in that we will specifically work, for example, on the hop mechanics, but I believe it's also crucial to put the hop, the step and the jump together, because the transitions from one phase to the other will have a big bearing on how the subsequent phase works out. With Jonathan, a couple of years back we spent a lot of time working on his hop as, to be open and honest, it wasn't long enough. So we had to develop the range and the positioning so that he could get an extra 40 to 50 centimetres of distance on his hop and this involved using some specific drills and also doing a lot more individual plyometric drills hopping drills, for example, to develop the strength required to also hop long. One of the drills that we initially used, and you're watching it on screen now, really isolates the dropping of the hopping free leg after the takeoff to get that long length below the body. And we found that this initially helped Jonathan in learning how to get the correct positioning for the hop. However, 
Once he or yourself or the athlete you are coaching has learned how to drop the free leg down after the takeoff in the hop, it becomes more important to string the phases together and also to work on, as I've indicated, the length of the hop that you need to jump your optimum distance. But therefore, one of the other drills that we will use involves going from a lower box, landing and then going onto a higher box for the step phase. So we can work on the range required for the two phases and particularly a jump if we add that in as well. And also subject the athlete to quite significant landing forces because you don't want to do too many isolation drills, particularly for the triple jump hop, as the forces and the speed and power required to hop from a long run up are far greater than those that you'll encounter when doing a more isolationist drill. As an aside, it's great to get comments from channel subscribers and viewers who send me details and sometimes videos of their new PBs. On the community section of the YouTube channel, you'll also see some videos from other athletes from around the world who have also improved their personal bests. So, if you've got the time, do go over and check out that part of the channel. I do also get asked occasionally about my editorial work and, as you may or may not know, I've been a writer, a magazine editor for over 15 years in various capacities and I'm currently the performance editor for the UK's athletic magazine, Athletics Weekly. And recently, for the magazine, I interviewed the UK's third-ranked triple jumper, Naomi Ogbita. I love speed, I just need to learn how to <laughs> hit the board. So I think what I need to work on is obviously hitting the board um, and yeah, just holding my step a bit more. I think every triple jumper wants to do that. And the next question is a more general conditioning one for the long triple jump and sprints. And it's about what core exercises do I recommend? Well, I think this will be a video in its own right at some stage in the future. So what I'm going to say now is about keeping it more specific to what's required of the event. So lots of drills, for example, include core aspects, posture and stability, holding your body in the positions required to jump. So you'll have seen us running with bars overhead, for example. Now these require you to hold your posture whilst you're performing the exercise. Running in particular with a bar puts a lot of stress through the core in order for you to hold position and make sure you don't fall out of shape. Additionally, your core also includes your hips and your glute region. So we also do a lot of work on, as you'll have seen potentially in videos, on the hip region. So as well as doing the more basic types of core exercises such as planks, sit-ups, bicycle crunches, leg lifts and so on, I'd also perform exercises that engage the core in a more specific way to the requirements of the long triple jump and sprints. Well, I hope you enjoyed this new, slightly new format of video and good luck of course with your training and competitions and do subscribe to the channel and leave any questions you may have in the comment section below or through my other social media. You may have also noticed, particularly on my Instagram channel, that I'm coaching a young athlete from Kuwait. Now, she's not had a lot of great coaching out in her country, and it'll be interesting to see how she develops over the course of the couple of months that she's here training in the UK. Track Valley reached out to me regarding the t-shirts that they designed that are all about track and field and they've offered a discount for subscribers to my channel. So if you'd like to take a look at some of their great designs, then go to the link at the end of the video.